Hey everyone, we're Drew and Katie Taylor with Catholic Link. And on this episode, we got to interview Dr. Andrew and Sarah Swafford about their new series with Ascension, What We Believe, and just a bunch of life tips and great conversation. So we hope that it helps you better understand the beauty of the Catholic faith. Swafford's, welcome to the Catholic Link Show. Hey, it is so great to be with you guys. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Uh, for our listeners, we are really excited to have uh, Dr. Andrew and Sarah Swafford on the show today uh, that are going to be talking about their new series that they made, which is uh, What We Believe. And uh, man, we are just, this is going to be awesome. So uh, Dr. Swafford is a professor of theology at Benedictine College, and uh, his wife, Sarah, is an international Catholic speaker. And so before we jump into the series, uh, I'd love to for our listeners to get to know you guys a little bit more. So tell us about like your journey of how you met and then how does it go from like meeting to becoming, you know, theology professor slash international Catholic speaker? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. So well, before I married up, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I begged him. I was like, please, I'm not a very good cook, but... <laughs> the bed. I don't know. Like I'm trying really hard. No, we actually are um, at Benedictine College. We're hiding in Andy's office because we have five children and we either hide in the car and do radio shows or we hide in his office and do uh, Zoom interviews. And I think everybody out there understands why. So, um, but we met at Benedictine. So we actually are kind of where we met. So we met in college. Um, both of us had really big conversions at Benedictine College. We, um, Gosh, we owe so much to this school and to Focus. Uh, we were some of the guinea pigs of the very first Focus Bible studies. Nice. Um, originated here at Benedictine, and they tried stuff out on us, and it must have worked. So um, <laughs> we we love it, and we uh, we've been married 17 years, and um, Andy is a professor here now, which is so great. And it's really easy to talk about how ministry started. We um, the minute our hearts were set on fire for the Lord and for the Catholic faith. Um, Man, once you catch that that bug, you just it never leaves you, and you want to do for others what was so beautifully done for you, and that's the reason why Andy wanted to be a professor, and that's the reason why um, you know we got married uh, a year after college and had Thomas and Fulton. We have five kids, and Thomas and Fulton are sixteen and fifteen, and you know all the way down to three our kids, and so um, we just instantly were like, man, I want to give back. And so Andy, um, being a professor, and then I, ha I was a dorm director, like a dorm mom at Benedictine. Uh, so Andy got his doctorate and then we were blessed to, there was an opening at Benedictine and God just made like a thousand little corner turns happen. And, um, the, and the dream to get, to be able to come back and be at Benedictine came true. Uh, but we were poor, like grad school poor. Like there's poor and there's grad school poor. So uh, <laughs> I, I had these two little boys and they had a job opening for a residence hall director. And you get to live in the dorms for free um, and eat in the cafeteria for free, which I don't know who wants to sign up for that again, but we did. So, um, <laughs> so we, we did that. And my ministry all started in, you know, I was a dorm mom. And for three years, uh, we lived in a dorm with a hundred and 42 freshman college women. So um, that's really where my ministry started was with the women and the men. Cause you know, where there are women, the men will find them. So I started doing <laughs> ministry and just hanging out with the college students and, uh, and to be totally honest, it all just kind of took a life of its own. And um, I always say, I would say the same thing to the 10 people at my Island eating cookie dough and chicken wings that I went to 10,000 people. And so the Lord just continues mm -hmm. to, um, just really allow us to share our hearts in so many different ways. And we just love it. We absolutely love it. Yeah. I mean, Sarah kind of summed it up. I came to Benedictine just to play football. It was the only reason I came. And I grew up Catholic, but kind of the name only didn't really mean much. And I had, uh, so Focus was here. We also had Dr. Edward Sri was a key professor of mine and kind of really helped me uh, with scripture, connect Jesus to the church and mm -hmm. just give my life to the Lord and wanted to kind of give back in the way he gave to me. And um, then I went off to Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, did a master's in Old Testament Semitic mm -hmm. Languages. And he was they, Catholic yeah. Andy. He's the only Catholic in the program. So. Yeah, they, they call me Catholic Andy. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm in the dorms with about half the guys with PhD bound, half the pastor bound. It was a great mm -hmm. time, like Hebrew and Aramaic and languages and like, history of theology. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, really just kind so of, the What We Believe story, guys, or what, what We Believe program really started back then when we were like, oh, shoot, how do you explain that, right? <laughs> 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 we went to another and just couldn't be more grateful. Yeah, we love it here. Wow. And we're in Atkinson, so come visit anytime. We love showing people the beautiful 
state of Kansas. So it's great. Ah, that's awesome. Living in a dorm with that many freshman girls with babies and eating in the cafeteria and all mm-hmm. of that, how that progressed, and then going to a Protestant I School. seminary yeah. is yeah. definitely a incredible opportunity, especially I think so often. So I actually have friends that have attended there. I, in the military, we do so much ecumenical I oh. just encounter because we're Christians and we have to band together and like figure this life out. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the reality that that allows for these conversations. And so I do want to dive a little bit into this program mm-hmm. on what inspired you to write, uh, to be a part of what we believe and who you really hope that it'll serve. Mm. Great question. That's a, that's a, I mean, it's a great segue too, because it, it mm-hmm. you know, we, I think in this book and Marceline and Ambrosio and I wrote this and he's a scholar of the church fathers. Mm-hmm. And uh, we said great chemistry in the three of us with the videos, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, the book is, it's not polemical. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's warm. I think any non-Catholic, anybody who's seeking yeah, uh, in any sure. way, Catholic, non-Catholic, secular, non you know, uh, faith or no faith, I think will really love this book. And, and really Catholicism, you know, when I've got friends from Trinidad, I tell Trinidad who converted, it, it's like, you're not rejecting your past. You're embracing a fuller mm-hmm. version of it. And what Catholicism is at the end of the day is Christianity with nothing left out. Mm-hmm. When, you, yeah, like when you were writing the book, I think a lot of people may know this, people may not know this, but um, it's a, a whole program. So there's a book that is fantastic. Um, like Father Mike was, I was with Father That's Mike funny. since last week. Yeah. And he was so funny because he's like, he's working on the catechism in a year, you know, the podcast right now. Yeah. And he was holding the book and he was just like, man, the catechism is like, thick and dense. And it was so nice to have like the essentials kind of mm-hmm. like they did an amazing job of like kind of pulling out some of the the beauty and the meat of it and just like kind of giving the essentials. And then um, Ascension asked us to go over to Rome and film the video series. And that was kind of like just taking the book and the workbook and just going over there. And, and we actually did the creed through the churches in Rome. So we picked different churches and like pretty much did like a pilgrimage uh, through Rome and and did explaining the creed and bringing in all the different aspects of what we believe through like almost like theology in stone, if that makes sense. So um, it was just incredible to be able to like tie the book and the workbook and the video series together, uh, which was not easy, but it was, it ended up turning out to be really beautiful because I mean, the church, what we believe, like, hi, I'm so glad you have 16 hours to talk about what we believe, you know, Um, because it's very, it can be very dense and intimidating. And I think um, that was one thing that we prayed about over the last couple of years. It's really beautiful how the Holy Spirit works because this has been in the works for years. They have been wanting to do this for years. And COVID just threw, a, I mean, uh, yeah. and everything, but COVID really delayed a lot of things. And then lo and behold, we come out of a pandemic and I think it's more needed than ever. And mm-hmm. it's just really beautiful to see the Lord was like, weaving and preparing and, you know, using it in a way. And I think it's coming out in a time when I think a lot of people are, are really searching, even people who've been Catholic for their whole lives, um, maybe mm-hmm. been going to mass their whole lives. There's there's a lot of questions, I think, right now. And uh, it was our way of, of being a part of something that hopefully provides answers, because I think a lot of people are looking for answers. Yeah. I mean, like it's <sighs> doing the faith over there. It's like it comes to life. It's not just an idea. Yeah. It didn't happen on Middle Earth or Mount Olympus. Like this is, this is like <laughs> history you know and like you go to san clemente which is this 12th century church Mm -hmm. uh it's built over a fourth century church so you can go down and that whole fourth century is built over the remains of a first century house that's believed to be connected to saint clement the fourth pope and so you go down there and talk about tradition and you realize you're 300 yards from the Colosseum within eye shot it's like the christians that prayed right in the spot and so like the whole series takes you places like that or you know it like gives you like holy yeah it's yeah I don't know. It's not an idea. It's a, mm-hmm. this is life. And it's like, here's an mm-hmm. invitation to enjoy. We got to, and because of COVID, the Holy Spirit, that God, um, because of COVID, a lot of the places that we got into, we wouldn't have been able to get into if they weren't shut down. And um, so we were able, we filmed one of those uh, series in the same prison cell that St. Peter and St. Paul shared together where a lot of the letters were probably written, uh, a lot of the New Testament letters. So like, you know, you're just down there praying and it's just like, there was, there's water, there's a stream down there that still bubbles that they baptized prisoners in. And it's like, like, we're down there filming and it's just like, stop. 
You know what I mean? Uh, like, you see, you know, um, it's really hard. I think for sometimes uh, Americans and uh, people of our you know 20th century us to not connect the church to just like hierarchy and tradition. You know, like church buildings mm-hmm. and parishes and like parish politics and like it's hard to not think of that as church all the time. Where it's like, no, 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 like church, like church what the holy spirit wanted at pentecost you know like you start really going all like what the holy spirit what what everybody was putting into play through the sacrament through the eucharist through um like kind of what kind of really taking it back to like the simple gospel you know and it's just really beautiful to see the church in that light not that all you know it's always going to be you know all the everything but it's cool to strip it down to like what is really church the eucharist yeah. The Eucharist makes the church. Yeah, uh, amen. Yeah. I I think it was it was such a cool way that that you guys did it, and and for our listeners, when you check out the series, so there's the book which kind of deep dives into it, and then they have this workbook here, uh, which I'll hold up for a podcast listeners. You won't be able to see it but for our YouTube <laughs> listeners. You will, um, right? And and um, pro tip, I didn't realize this, but the uh, chart that you guys have is actually in the back of the workbook. I didn't, I didn't realize that for like two weeks. Uh, I was like, Oh, maybe, maybe I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and so, yeah. And then, and then they have the, the video series, right? So you can, you can go along with this. You can have a group that, um, that can, can work through this, some of this stuff together. Yeah. I think for those videos too, I mean, we've been to Rome mm-hmm. and, are blessed that like that's where we got engaged but at the same time there are so many churches there and i think for so many who have not had the opportunity to travel to rome to be able to see the history that is there that you're talking about like the beauty of how the church has developed and how what it looked like 2000 years ago and we still have that and that like proof of yeah just the christ centered aspect of our faith. And then I think for the study too, one of the things that really stood out to me was when I graduated college and I went and led a focused Bible study uh, in the parish and my women had this encounter with Christ, then it was, but Katie, I grew up Catholic and I really don't know what we believe. Mm -hmm. And this asking of, can you lead a catechism study for us? And like, can you teach us what like the church teaches? And I wrote something, and I am so grateful that 10 years later, there are resources that people can pick up and go, like, here is this tool to unpack it in exactly what you said in a relational way. Like, I, The book itself is very good from a scholarly, but I think, too, the videos bring in that relational conversation of how it applies to every one of our lives. I, in a way that you get both and in this study. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Such a gift. <laughs> so what, yeah, when, really as. One of that, we wanted oh. it to be accessible. That was kind of the number one thing. Mm-hmm. Like, um, just to make sure people didn't feel like they were drowning in the riches of the church, but that they were like <laughs> swimming and treading and, you know, like not, not mm-hmm. drowning. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Was, um. I think for me, one of my favorite parts was, I think it was the, is it the church of the Holy cross where they have all of the relics of like the nail and the true cross. And I, when I, I, when I watched that in the film, I looked at Katie, I was like, wait, wait, we like have these things. Like, this is so awesome. <laughs> right. um, was, was, yeah. Um, was there a favorite part for you guys or like, as you were filming it or, or developing oh. the study? Oh, <laughs> like asking for favorite children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh. gosh. I mean, that whole area right there, it's yeah. by St. John Lateran, uh, which is the four, first church commissioned by Constantine. And it, you have this kind of apostolic, which is actually the seat of the Holy Father as the Bishop of Rome, his cathedral, and then Santa Croce. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I, I love, I, I, for me, like you go to these different places. Sometimes it's a beautiful church. Sometimes it's who's buried there. Sometimes it's what happened here, what relic is here. So like, I love them all for different reasons. Mm-hmm. One on the devotional side that we absolutely love is San Augustino, which oh. has the, it's the, has the tomb of St. Monica. And to pray before St. Monica, and you think about all the, think about the mothers in our lives. You think about the mothers who've had wayward sons and daughters who've walked away from the faith. You think about the power of her prayers, the kind of unsung heroism on her part. And the way St. Augustine speaks of her in the confessions when he finally comes around and he, it's so endearing. Um, I don't know, that, that's, I mean, that's my favorite right now, but yeah. I might give you a different answer tomorrow. Yeah, but, yeah, every yeah. hour. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think one of my favorite things about um, the videos in Rome was we, our call time was 7 a.m. And we usually filmed until 7 or 8 at night for 10 days straight. And so there was, there was, and it was 105 degrees every day. And, um, and Rome is, is not for the faint of heart. We walked, you know, probably 25 the miles. The camera guys told us not to sweat. Like, yeah. The I'm camera guy. Yeah. Out. I look, if I look, um, yeah. On the videos. I just, <laughs> the the day, like, okay. I'm just going to go with this. Right. But, um, but my favorite part was, uh, it was almost like a mini pilgrimage in a way for us because it stretched us. I mean, we were like, you know, coffee, food, like praying, like, I mean, it was just really gelato. Well, gelato no, literally. What? <laughs> moment. You'll never see any of that. Cause like the Holy spirit just knows how to, to make it all come together. But it was, it was one of those beautiful times where we were like the whole 10 days was just like, what is happening? And then God would just drop like major, amazing, like bombs on us. You know, like we would get to go do something or see something or have a, we'd be praying like, after something and just it was like a rush of whole like just a rush of the holy spirit you know it, it was so again there's so much that was yeah. going on behind the scenes mm -hmm. um and probably my favorite part was we were with a camera crew an amazing camera crew out of uh pennsylvania called bowstring and they were with they were with george clooney the week before they were with us um so they're like a high high level stuff, high level yeah. stuff very beautiful uh they're amazing at what they do but we had an eight person camera crew with us that most of them were not catholic unchurched um our sound guy he his mom was wiccan and so like he was trying to like but they had to they had to listen to us the whole time you know so we were having a lot of phenomenal conversations like they would be filming and they were like they would just get so overwhelmed with the beauty and the grandeur of what was going on that they would be like misty like they they cried a couple times and we would be talking about what this is and what was you know and they were just like in awe and it was so cool for us as like die hard like more like radical Catholics, like, let's go Catholics. For us to watch them see it through their eyes, like in the moment was incredible because we would stop filming and they come over and be like, so when you say uh, <laughs> Jesus, like, you know, it was so cool because we were like, yeah. And that would feed us for like another segment. And we would like, be like, okay, well, let's pick up with, let's pick up with this. Or we'd be at lunch and they would be like, well, what do you mean by da da da? And it's like, okay, well, we should probably talk about that, you know. Or, <laughs> I feel like the Lord really worked some incredible stuff that you will never see, but it was part of what I think made the video so great. Was we were stretched, we were tired, it was hot. Um, I mean, like they, we were coming up with stuff like as the Holy Spirit was working. Um, the three mm -hmm. of us were praying really intensely, and we were in like the whole one of one of the holiest places in the world. So it was just really cool. I mean, it was really cool. So that, sorry, that was a really long answer there. But it was just, some of those things are really neat. When I think about the study, I probably yeah. think about it in a different way than someone that's probably just looking at it, um, you know, paper, you know, so. Sure. Absolutely. But the power of you guys being able to evangelize and really take the eight of them on pilgrimage with you and maybe eight people that would have never signed up for a pilgrimage to Rome, right. but yeah, totally. they got to encounter that with you and what a testimony and yeah, inspiring part of it. Yeah. yeah. I, well, so one of the questions, one of the questions I was going to ask you was like, who, who was the person that you were kind of envisioning when you made this study, you know, was it like the the college freshman that just found out about Jesus? But I don't know, maybe you already answered it of like, like these cameramen who have never <laughs> heard about Jesus and like, okay, let's, let's tell them how awesome this is. But right, I don't know. Right. Was, yeah. Do you guys have right. any other thoughts on that? Well, so it's cool. So we, um, like I had worked with this camera crew before when we did the Roman series, uh, the okay. and the Hebrew series. And so I remember at the Roman series, I remember thinking to myself, I want to try to register with this crew. And it's, that was kind of our first four way into this. And so, I mean, I think, and I, I'll let you follow up here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's, it's, it's sort of, I mean, I think it can take anybody wherever they are deeper, but I think it can also be a shallow entry pool. Uh, I mean, I think someone like these camera guys, or, you know, we've all got family who've walked away from the church. So anybody who's like a seeker, uh, I think could totally, I mean, be get a ton out of it and, and might meet our Lord. Uh, I, I would assign my, the book in a college classroom, um, like an intro mm -hmm. theology class. I think it's, yeah. it's got plenty to challenge people, but I think it's, it's also, we know, a lot of high school, we know a lot of high school uh, theology teachers that are using it in their high school yeah. nice. um, theology, yeah. intro theology classes. Why not? It's probably like, designed, you said, yeah. like you said, Katie, yeah. like, 
please, Lord, somebody else do this so I can just teach from it, right? Like I, I felt the same way as you when I was leading Focus Bible Studies. I was like, let's see what Scott Hahn has to say about yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to find somebody else, you know? Yes. <laughs> we have a lot of RCIA, RCIA groups that are using it. Cool. Great. A lot of Focus yeah. Bible Studies are using it. We, we've we heard from just a lot of moms groups. I have one of my best friends. Um, they always do a book study and they're doing it this fall. Mm-hmm. I just like, Again, young moms. A lot of them have been Catholic their whole life, but it's like, I don't know either. I think a lot of people have been Catholic their whole life, but still have places or maybe certain issues or things that they're like, I think, I think this program could blow your mind a little bit, you know, where you're just like, what I've gone. And there's a couple of things even that I, I read in the book where I was like, oh my gosh, like I have a theology degree from Benedictine and I still gla- must have like, did I miss that class? You know what it I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Or I didn't understand it to like the depth that. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. There's other people who can just take you so much deeper um, into it, which is so great. So I I joke that I, I really do think, um, you know, 11 years old to 111 years old. I really don't mm-hmm. think yeah. I don't think that there's I think everybody could get something out of it. Um, yeah. But I think Ascension, they loved. I, do you guys remember the um, the they did? They went to Israel and did the footsteps of Christ. If, if you remember, mm-hmm. a few years ago, they have a study that deep dives into like the walk of our Lord. Um, And it was so well received because a lot of people were like, I love Jesus. I just don't understand everything about our Lord. And so they went over to Israel and did this where they went to the footsteps of Christ and did it on video. And it was just, it was just awesome. And that was when the minute they did that, all the emails and the phone calls came in like for the church, do it for the church. (laughs) Please, please, you know, give us a catechism supplement, you know, (laughs) It's great. I think if we go back to that chart yeah. you mentioned, I mean, the, the idea mm-hmm. behind that chart, it's just like if people have seen the Bible timeline, the Bible timeline yeah. chart, and the way Jeff Cavins has so brilliantly taught the Bible through this Bible timeline, and Father Mike has done so well expounding the Bible in your podcast, like that chart is really meant to be the catechism version mm-hmm. of the Bible timeline. Yeah. And even Father Mike's Catechism of the Year really is meant to dovetail with this study. So if, if the Bible timeline helped people study the Bible, that's the goal of this study to help people kind of just learn the Catholic faith um, you know, in, in a kind of a digestible way that's also deep at the mm-hmm. same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember when I was at the Air Force Academy. So one of the guys that was on, uh, we were parachute instructors together. He, We oh, were kind of okay. talking, you know, yeah, <laughs> that, that was my extracurricular activity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you for your and, service. Mm-hmm. Ah, thank you. Thank, thank you for your support. We that's amazing. It and appreciate it. <laughs> uh, but but we were solving the world's problems deep at night. And, and he said, you know, he asked about... Um, the Catholic faith. And he was like, okay, but what, what are like the core doctrines? You know, like if you were to lay it out, like what, yeah, you know, what would you have to believe to be Catholic? And I, I, at the time I like kind of like stumbled through it. And eventually I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll just, I'll get back to you. Um, because, <laughs> right, because right, it's, right. it's hard when you, it's just like, like, here's the elephant, an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> of like, here are all these amazing things. And that, that's what I really appreciated about this study was it was very like, okay, there is a lot. Yes. And it's beautiful and it's deep, but like, here are just some basic steps. And, and I was thinking too, we have really good friends that are um, Catholic school teachers and he teaches in high school. And we were just talking about the difference between um, evangelizing and catechizing and how a lot of these you know students that even come to Catholic high school haven't been evangelized yet. And so, yeah. so you kind of, and, but what I thought your study did, which was really cool, was it sometimes we draw the line of like, okay, um, evangelizing is bringing people to the person of Jesus and then catechizing is like teaching them all of the things that they need to know, but it's, it, I, it really shouldn't be that black and white. And the series kind of did a little of both where it, like you bring this, you kind of bring them in with the beauty, with this person of Jesus, but then it's also like um, feeds them once they get hungry. I don't, is, is that kind of like something that you guys were cognizant of or? Oh, I totally agree. It's really great yeah. for you. I, I mean, thank you for saying that because that was definitely one of the goals. Um, because <laughs> again, I think we're like you guys, you know, a lot of us um had conversions, big conversions, and that was a process. I mean, that, but yeah. I mean, Dr. Shree, uh, you know, we we owe so much to Dr. Shree and Benedictine and Focus, and you know, oh my gosh, but one of the things you used to say was you have to know the truth and love the good. You have to know the truth and love the good. You have to know the truth and love the good. And um, we used to, people used to joke that he knew the truth and I love the good. And that's why we ended up together. Um, but, but like that, I mean, we just laugh, but it's exactly what you're saying though, is if you just present the doctrine of the church to somebody, 
with like a crabby face, you know, like that's not going to work. But if you also just be like, we're having hot dogs and pizza, <laughs> we're giving away iPads, you know, like if you just like do all that and get everybody to come, but you don't give them any food or sustenance and you don't give them substance and then you don't, you, what are we really doing? You know? So I think it was that marriage between you, you want this, you need this. This is amazing. You actually ache for it. You might just not know it yet. And we have all the answers. And sometimes we're not very good at giving them, but we're going to try really hard to like give it in a way that's understandable and approachable and exciting mm-hmm. and loving and still mm-hmm. true and good yeah. and beautiful. And I think that that was something that we had many meetings. We had many plannings. I mean, over years, the the three of us and the, the team at Ascension we had a lot mm. of conversations about what we wanted this to look like because it was so mm. important to get the tone and the content right. Um, yeah. Because evangelization and catechesis are so important and they have to yeah. be blended. And like you said, it's not black and white. Where does one pick up yeah. and one move off? If you do it right, which I think the, the Holy Spirit's really inspiring so many of us to like want to do it right. Uh, it's dynamic. Mm. It, it's really attractive. And, um, and, and in, in a real way, it's hard to say no to because you're like, whoa, like I just saw everything I've been looking for uh, in a way that I feel like I could even do this myself. You know what I mean? So, so, so right. It kind of reminds me of a pilgrimage. Uh, and I, we've, we've done several pilgrimages in Poland and Holy Land and Rome. Some tour guides are great, but then, you know, sometimes it's more like a museum tour. And they're like, well, in 1992, this is, it's like, if you can't answer, and for all of us, if we can't answer the so what question, why mm-hmm. And I think when you when you can answer the so what question, it, w- how does this change my life? Then you're doing both catechizing and evangelizing, and they're kind of moving into each other. And I think the study aimed to do that. So thank you for saying that. Mm-hmm. On that, the switching gears a little bit for a lot of our primary listeners, and as you talked about the marriage of the two, uh, the idea of maybe some marriage advice that you guys have for young couples I trying to live out the faith you guys are radically busy and so how how that all applies to your marriage to life oh is it hard or do you think it's difficult I mean I knew it we're the only ones <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, like, everyone, uh, yeah where it's like oh my gosh yeah is it, we were just laughing we were just laughing because I love it when people like do you have any marriage advice? And I'm always like, do you yeah. have four hours? <laughs> yeah. um, pretend for a minute to have it right. But we enjoy, yeah. we enjoy, um, we enjoy the striving of, of f- mm. trying to figure out married life and you guys with a brand new baby. Mm. And oh my gosh, mm. I always tell people like new moms, I'll come scrub your toilet with a toothbrush. Like that's how I feel about <laughs> it. Like it is so hard. Having a baby is amazing. And so sacrificial. So um, I'm totally teasing. Yes, we love young married couples. We also love very old married couples like ourselves. So um, but yeah, it's not easy. I think the number one thing that that is so great is just a Chesterton says that true friendship starts with the words me too. Um, so I think when you see young people, Andy stops young like dads in the grocery store and is like, you got this, man. <laughs> You're at the hardest age. Like, it's going to get well, easier. You really, <laughs> people have, you know, when they're all, like, under three, under four. I mean, and, and under, five, under, under five. It's like, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 on the one hand, enjoy every stage. You know, to all the listeners, enjoy every stage. Each stage has its own blessings and unique challenges. Uh, but there is a sense a in which, way of at the human level, man, I mean, I, you know, at a certain point, it's like, I can start making deals. If you do this, I'll do this. <laughs> right? <laughs> Our reason is starting to enter the building, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> But when they're all young, it is so physically taxing. And again, don't wish it away. Don't ever wish yeah. it away. But it, in, in a real way, I would say is the hardest stage. I mean, I, having five with a couple of teenagers, humanly speaking, is way easier than when I had two in diapers. Yeah. Um, so it, it's important to kind of have perspective. And one thing I often say is there are seasons in life. Yep. And, and if you know there's a season, it's like, well, this winter will become spring eventually. But in the moment, you're like, it's going to be like this forever, but work. Yeah. And Time so it just, ten. It's just buried. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really a lot of perspective. <laughs> One of the things that um, we always say for young couples, and um, you know, we always say, "Do as we say, not as we always do." You know, it's kind of our joke. But you know, one of the things that we, one of our biggest regrets that we ever had as a young young couple was um, about six years ago, seven years ago, 
Swaf and I just, our, our word of the year was intentionality because we're dorks mm-hmm. and we have a word of the year. And I'm sure you, you people might be like that too. But our word of the year was like being intentional. And we decided to call up a few of our friends that, um, families that we were like close with, but you know, life is busy and kind of mm-hmm. crazy. And um, we just said, hey, we want to be more intentional with like, having good friends, not only for us as a couple, but at, for our kids. And so we called up like, we had like four or five couples that we called up and um, we started doing a thing called First Saturdays for Mary. So the first Saturday of every month, it's just kind of like on the schedule and we have everybody over to our house and we do it at 630 because having dinner is way too hard. So we come at 630 and everyone shows up, the kids go and play, um, the, the parents all just kind of chat, hang out. We call the kids back. Um, we throw, we used to bring like cookies and muffins and it was really cute and bougie. And now we just like put Oreos <laughs> and half bags of Doritos on the thing. You know I mean? Like we literally don't even try anymore. And the kids, <laughs> it's really fun. And then we pray together as families. So we do like mm-hmm. a the rosary or a divine mercy chaplet, or we pray, you know, just some type of prayer. We sing a praise and worship song mm-hmm. or two. And then the kids pray over the parents and the parents pray over the kids. Mm-hmm. It takes a whopping 22 minutes because we have. I think 42 kids between the five couples for six couples now. So, I mean, it's, it's wild. It's amazing. It's beautiful. And then all the kids go back away and we lock the door. No, I'm just kidding. All the kids go back <laughs> and they do a Nerf gun war or something epic. And the parents, all the couples grab a drink and we sit around my living room and every couple shares their high and low of the month. Mm-hmm. And it is, Honestly, it has been life changing for like all of us. And why, why I say this, and this is my best advice to young couples is like those moments where you're sitting around listening to other people just like share. And again, in the beginning, it's, you know, it starts simple and then it gets, as you get closer, it gets, you know, better. But we've had, we've had couples in, um, health crisis. We've had couple, we've had people very close to death. We've had miscarriages. We've had, um, you know, what do you do when someone shows your kid porn in the bathroom? You know, we had families that were going through things like that. It's just like, where do you take these questions of like Catholic Mm -hmm. life and family life? Where do you take Mm -hmm. those, uh, you know, like uh, different people falling away from the faith, like family members that have walked away, like just the heartache of life and then also the joys of life. Because we always mm-hmm. joke that you don't go to a potluck and share your high or your low, right? Like everyone gather around. We're gonna share <laughs> our low of the month, right? Like you don't share either of those. And um, mm-hmm. and when we have like le- the days leading up to it, we even have to have a conversation like, what is our high of the month? We'll go, what is our low of the month? And we are like praying about it and thinking about it. Um, and it has been just so beautiful. And that's why mm-hmm. I say this to a lot of young, like. I say it to college students. I say it to engaged couples. I say it to newly married couples. I say it to couples that are empty nesters. Like you've mm-hmm. got to find a couple. Maybe it's just literally one couple. Maybe it's two couples. Yeah, maybe you have a lot of kids. It's okay. Lock them in the basement. I'm kidding. Like, like bring them to, you know, like we all, none of us wanted to have to get babysitters or have to like make it another thing. So we just made it easy. And our kids look forward to it so much because now they have these little mm-hmm. friends they are praying with for seven years. Yeah. So that's like my one very long, sorry, piece of advice is just be real, like be vulnerable, be available, mm-hmm. be, be accountable to those mm-hmm. friends because we pray over each other as, as married couples. And it's really beautiful. And I, I wish so badly we would have done it in those first mm-hmm. five years of marriage where we would look at each other and be like, are we doing this right? Like, <laughs> like, like like, you know, like, I remember we used to be like, good Catholic couples don't fight. Like, I mean, we, never, we never fight. But yes. on those few occasions where we had discussions that got got a little bit heated, right? Like, um, but anyway, that's my best, my best yeah. advice for transitioning in life and things like that is to have some couples that you can be really, like, be very real mm-hmm. with. Um, and know, like, even if you're in transition, I have a lot of college students, young adults are like, well, we're only going to be in the state for a year. It's like, okay, well, then you're just not going to have friends for a year. Is that really what we're going to do? <laughs> Chalk this year up as a loss. <laughs> I know, right, right. So I always tell people, like, even if you don't think you're going to be um, there for very long, you might make lifelong friends. I mean, we Zoom drink with a lot of people. We Zoom, we have Zoom drinks with a lot of our priest friends and different couples that we're close with that live in different mm-hmm. states. We, we will have a date night and double date over mm-hmm. Zoom. It's been great. So don't just... Don't, you're not alone and to be open and to be honest about what's going on and be able to even laugh about it and cry about it and just 
Mm-hmm. It's just not easy. And, and, and everybody's struggling with something. So don't assume that everybody is, is doing just fine. You know, it, we're all, I always say we're all on the hashtag striving, hashtag struggle bus train. You know what I mean? So um, don't feel alone. Well, it's really transformed yeah. the kids' friendships. So we, we had confirmations about mm-hmm. four, four years ago, or no, about two years ago. And four of the kids were confirmed, all picked sponsors as other parents within this group. And, and cool. Ashton's a great Catholic town, lots of, but there was a need to be intentional about fostering these friendships. And mm-hmm. I get some other dads and moms praying, other, you know, the, those kids will see me and Sarah and it, it creates a new normal. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's not just us. We're not just weird. It's a new normal and it gives them. A lot we of are strength. weird, but we're yeah. weird in numbers. Yeah. We have more, there's more people. That are Catholics, <laughs> you know what right? I mean? <laughs> boys and girls. So like they're kind of growing up, interacting mm-hmm. with each other and uh, praying's not weird. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just been transformative. Yeah. Uh-huh. I love that. <laughs> I love the intention to build community because mm-hmm. I, regardless of what stage you're at, you need yeah. community. I yeah, you need great. other people walking this path with us. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, like, um, I think we've we've talked and, you know, we, um, we, we've we kind of mulled over like some of these things of the like, oh, we feel the need, like that desire, um, especially with vulnerability. And it is so difficult um, you know, when, when you get out of say the college stage, for example, and there's not just this, um, venue where you can just sit around with all your friends, you know, until wee hours of the night and talk about things. Um, so it's like that desire is still there, but, but you might have to create the space or the time to be able to go deep because it's not, it's, it's never just going to happen. Like, right after church or at a soccer game or whatever. Yep. Um, like, like you have to be intentional about totally. creating that environment, um, which I think is really beautiful. Oh yeah. Even for, sure. for good Catholics, like who might just yeah. talk yeah. about politics and church politics. It's like, yeah. that's not, sh- that's like other people talk about sports scores. Like that's not sharing life together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, and I was easy to fall into that when you're tired. And oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, I look at the two of you, I'm sure like so sleep deprived. That's a season right now. Right. <laughs> like, and you're like, you literally, I can, and I'm just going to say this as being honest, there have been times in the last mm-hmm. seven years where we're having a baby or we're doing the, you know, and you're just like, I like, and all the couples in our, in our group will say the same thing. They're like, I don't know if we can go this month. Like, you know, you're like, I'm yeah. so tired. Like, I think we have to punt. You know, and then we like muster up the like, cause usually our kids are like, we are going. <laughs> in the car. Yeah. So I'm like, we muster up the like, get there, you know, and we, and we pull everybody together to get there or we host it and we pull it together and we host it. And we always, always at the end of the night, we're like, I am so glad we did that. Mm-hmm. Like I needed that so bad. That was so life giving. Mm-hmm. So this is my little like. The devil's going to try to talk you out yeah. of it a hundred different ways. But to be able to just say like, no, like it doesn't need to be perfect. We don't put up, we don't mm-hmm. do elaborate dinners. Most of us mm-hmm. come in our sweats. We don't look great. We don't, it's not because it's, we don't want it to be one more thing. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. is literally life giving and life feeding to you. So I tell young, mm-hmm. young couples, I'm like, look, like this may look different for all of you. You may say nights are too hard. You guys might just do like a, Saturday morning, go to the park, mm-hmm. you guys get coffee, let the kids play and you do mm-hmm. highs and lows while the kids are, you know, in their normal wake up time. Cause you're worried about bedtime or nap. I'm like, it doesn't have to be perfect, but do it like really yeah. do yeah. You have to eat. So eat together. You have to you know, <laughs> have yeah. nap time, you know, or zoom it, whatever. But I think the Lord really, really wants this for people. And I think the devil loves to set up mm-hmm. obstacles for it. So just kind of call out what those, you know, those obstacles are going to be. My house isn't clean enough. We don't have anything to eat for it, whatever. Just call those out and then just, and then just like kind of offer that to the Lord and be like, I know you want this. I know yeah. you want me to have a prayer life and I know you want me to have life with friends in the spirit. So like, what does that, just make it look however it can look best for you, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so beautiful. Okay. I, well, I was just going to say to, uh, to Andrew, thank you for, for, uh, giving support to young dads. I, w- I was at Chipotle like six months ago and, uh, I was trying to feed the kids and it looked like a rice bomb, like went off in our, our the thing. And I'm just like, and, like, I just walk out of there and there's this, this dad who just kind of leans over as I walk by and he goes, hang in there. It gets easier. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Dude, and it, like, it just, it meant so much, you know, he was just, I was like, yeah, I won't always have rice in my hair. It won't always yeah, be rice. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's good. It's okay. true. It's true. Yeah. Every stage is 
we take from the like 16 to three and every yeah. stage is so is so different so and there's highs and lows like andy said there's like there's just different things about all of them like in your state right now we miss the days where we could talk over everyone's heads like where we could <laughs> fell over everyone's heads like now we like i'll say something and i'm like hey we could probably like and all the kids are like what's going on what are we talking about <laughs> and i'm like anything i'm looking you know what I mean? So, so just enjoy, like there, there are definitely things that are going to change and be wonderful, but just enjoy it. I mean, the Lord is in all of it. So yeah, but yeah, yeah. lightning round. I mean, all right, lightning lightning round. Here we go. All right. Uh, favorite saints. Oh, it's like favorite children questions. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I didn't say it was going to be easy. I know, I know, yeah. I know. It's really good too. Yankee to Aquinas and Augustine. St. Joseph. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Mm. Uh, John Paul II is, is a fan favorite at our house for mm. sure. Perfect. Favorite devotion? Oh, I do the Novena to the Sacred Heart every day. I love it so much. Mm. I love the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I could talk mm. about it. Gosh, this mm. is hard. This goes with <laughs> seasons in life too, right? So yeah. 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 Yes. I love being before the Blessed Sacrament. Um, mm. I, I always there's a Holy Land group I had uh, we've done this a couple of times, but uh, first time by the end of it, I'm like, this has been amazing. Jordan River, Capernaum. The friends, this is where Jesus was. The Eucharist is where he is. Let's not mm. forget that. Um, but I'm also mm. really partial to scripture. Some kind of Lexio Divina, um, just encounter the Lord that way. And and we're not perfect, but when we've done the rosary, it's kind of a, it's kind of like a Lexio over the gospel. And you know, so mm. Somewhere among those three, we we, we I, love I praying. We love praying a rosary as a family, um, and it's so funny because our younger kids are always like voting for the Divine Mercy Chaplet. They call it the short <laughs> rosary, and I'm like, we are obviously <laughs> categorizing it correctly, right? Like, um, yeah, we, we, and, and shout out to the rosary. We as as parents, 17 years into this. Um, we pr try to pray the rosary or do some type of, of like family prayer every day. Um, but the rosary has been the number one catech like catechism for our kids because mm. they're playing the rosary, be prepared for this, but they will ask so many questions during the rosary. We always have to mm -hmm. pause the rosary and answer questions, but that has been for us. Like that has been, sometimes that's why the rosary gets voted down because it takes like an hour. <laughs> it takes it yeah. All the questions. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but even a decade of the rosary or something for that that under ten crowd is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Makes them stop and start thinking about like like God, and and it's really cool. That's been really yeah. neat. I'm wait, I'm waiting for our kids to catch on and be like, Dad, we need some more mercy in our life. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, last one, and then uh, we'll t we'll talk about where people can find you more. So, last one is favorite book recommendation, other than what we believe the beauty of the Catholic faith. <laughs> <laughs> book recommendation. Yeah. yeah. There's only a thousand that are. Just yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard without without like a genre or topic, but I'd yeah. say just maybe a couple couple rounds. So. One, I think. <laughs> let me let me give you twenty. We'll start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, of it with uh, yeah. Obviously, Doctor Swafford. I think Doctor yeah. <laughs> Lee searching for maintaining peace. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody needs to read that and read it slowly and and don't don't go fast because it's it's going to be deceptively simple. Um, I'm partial to scripture, so I think there's lots of great scripture books uh, you know, to, to kind of guide the reader in. Uh, I love taking students through Love and Responsibility by Voitiwa. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, they just their eyes just pop out. They they they, I don't know. They they it gives them words that empowers them to like name situations they're in. It's like, mm -hmm. wow, I've I've experienced this my whole life. Now I've got a word for it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm taking students through Augustine's Confessions right now, and. He, his just his story is just so timeless. I mean, they're like, "Wow, yeah. I, I never knew that a fourth century dude could be just like me." Yeah, they always love the child out of wedlock. They're all like, "Yeah," well, and I'm like, "Yeah, keep reading." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every thing has a past, a center has yeah. a future, right? It's okay. human, human nature doesn't change that much. No, <laughs> yeah. Sin, yeah. What, what do you say? Sin isn't creative. It's it's pretty much nope. the same yeah. old thing. We could add Lord of the Rings and Narnia, but also yeah, Lord of the Rings Ooh. and Narnia. Uh, I, I, interjection though, some of my favorite memories as a dad 
in reading Lord of the Rings and Narnia and books like that to my kids because it, it gives them a vehicle to think about things that are beyond them, but in a way mm-hmm. that they can understand. And so they'd be like, oh, dad, what are demons? I'm like, well, you know, orcs, they're like corrupted elves. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, I get it. And then they go on. <laughs> <laughs> I would say everything you said, and then I would add, uh, during my conversion, um, the book that, like, rocked me was um, Lamb's Supper by uh, Scott Hahn. Uh, just that really, I was I was raised by a lot of Protestant friends. I had only Protestant friends in high school. And Lamb's Supper was the first time I went to Catholic Mass and was like, whop it. <laughs> right? I mean, I was just, like, enamored. Um, but Rome Sweet Home and Lamb's Supper, I feel like, mm. have to be on the list, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh man, so good. Okay. Um, thank you guys for, so much for being on the show. Where can people find out more about what we believe and following you guys and all the stuff that you guys have going on? You're so sweet. We're at the swafford's.com. Nice and simple. Um, all that is there. And then the, what we believe is there also. And then ascensionpress.com, ascension.com. Is it Ascension Press? Ascension Press.com. Ascension Press.com. Um, I always forget. I, I always want to yeah. add one to everybody. But, we'll, we'll, um, we'll leave the link. <laughs> yeah. It's all there. And then the other cool thing about the what we believe stuff is we worked so hard um, with Ascension. Ascension did such an amazing job. But the book, the workbook, the, the digital DVD downloads and that chart are all $27.99, which yeah. is kind of incredible because usually all of that would be really, really expensive. Yeah. And so they really want this to be something that people can access um, and do it together. So that's all on Ascension. Um, and it's it's really beautiful. You can watch a trial. You can watch like a sample just to see if it's for you too. So yeah. nice. Great. We are so grateful to have had you guys on for you guys to share your wisdom, your insight about what the church teaches, what we believe, why this matters, and also just the practical, fun conversation. So thank you. Well, I... now, Sina was a champion. Yeah, she oh my God. She nailed it. She nailed it. She, nailed it. she, she fell asleep. asleep. I wish I could snuggle. I want to snuggle. Yeah. <laughs> having us. Yeah, thanks for all the good work you guys This is amazing. You guys, hang in there. Thank you. Thank you so much. For all of our listeners, check out the Swaffords, check out what we believe, and we are praying for you. Until next time, God bless.